Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about how important it is for you to practice, to learn and practice, to not care what other people think. So today <clears throat> I'm just kind of ripping no script. Uh, I didn't even write and get coffee today and collect my thoughts, but I did uh, want to make a video because this topic was on my heart. So <clears throat> I think it's the most important thing or one of the most important things that we can learn to do in our lives, which is, as Dr. Wayne Dyer puts it, learn to be independent of the good opinions of other people. If you are watching this, you are most likely a very sensitive person. You've been different ever since you grew up, since day one, you know, you had something about you. You know, it's the old joke of like, okay, did mom sleep with the mailman? You know, like, I don't belong in this family. I am so different in every way. And to start off, what's coming up is to remind you that you are here for a very specific person. There's a reason you're different. You've always been different. You're what's called the curse breaker. Uh, you are here to break the family karmic ties and family karmas and cycles of toxic behavior in your family lineage, in your ancestral line. So what does that mean? Why do I bring that up? And how does that pertain to you learning not to care what other people think and why it's so important? Well, because if that resonates with you, that you are very different, you've always been very different. You've probably been singled out and alienated your entire life, even as a young boy or girl. You've always made to be out that you're different and it's been pointed out but not pointed out for most people in a positive way. Instead, people have always used it against you and to shame you and to make you feel guilty about who you really are. But they only did this, you know, teachers, friends, family members, because they didn't know what they were doing, that they're asleep and they're unconsciously triggered by the light that you bring. The fact that you've always stood out and garnered attention, even when you're not trying, especially when you're not trying, that makes people jealous because people who are insecure or aren't healed or at whole or at peace with themselves, they need to put other people down in order to make themselves feel better. And the people that naturally stand out, well, here they are putting all this time and energy and effort into be special and to be noticed and to be liked in order to compensate for their own lack of worthiness and love. And it comes out in the form of making other people wrong. Well, that's where that comes from. And since you're different and you shine naturally because you are a light worker, you're a chosen one, you're here for, for a specific purpose, that triggers insecure people that put together, put forth so much effort to try to get so much attention. And they're like, well, I'm doing all this stuff and like, you know, I got all the friends and I'm trying my hardest. And then like he or she just comes in and gets all this attention. Ugh, and it really irks them, right? That it's just you naturally. But what they don't understand is it has nothing to do with the external. It's an internal spiritual power and gift that you have that you carry. That's why you're here again. That's why they call it light worker. You're a light bearer. You're like a lighthouse. You're here to shine light in the places that are dark, mostly people's dark sides of their soul, their shadow, their ego. And that's what we do. We just naturally trigger people. So people have always not liked you just for absolutely no reason. You started a workplace. You haven't even talked to anyone. You're like friendly coming there with an open mind and like, just to do your job and like be friendly at work, but there's like maybe two or three people for whatever reason, they just don't like you. Um, I'm smiling cause I, I mean, I have like, I have this going on in my own life right now. And I just laugh at this point. It, I'm so aware of it that I just kind of laugh at this point and I'm like, Oh yeah. I'm like, Oh, here we are again. Like, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, I'm so used to it at this point for a long time. It bothered me because I didn't understand it, right? But when I awakened and I went on my healing journey, healed these things within myself, you know, my third eye opens up, my awareness, my consciousness is expanded. I can very easily see what's going on. And now it's so funny, it's comical. So why is this all important? Why am I even talking about this? It all pertains to how important it is for you to learn to not care what other people think and to instead as you've been programmed to be shamed for your uniqueness and your differences, to learn to not give a what anyone thinks except for you, and instead learn to embrace your new, your new uniqueness and understand that this is your gift, this is your power, it was given to you for a reason, it's like that for a reason. Because when you learn to embrace who you really are, 
partly by being independent of the good opinions of other people, not caring what other people think at all, you're really stepping into your power and your purpose, your happiness, your fulfillment, your abundance, your sense of safety and security. You're embodying what it means to be an empowered, healed individual because now you don't care what other people think, you're just doing you to the fullest. You're really shining bright and you're doing what you came here to do on earth, which is light up the darkness. Other people are gonna, and the funny thing is, other people are gonna be even more triggered by it because now you're even more authentic and you're really shining your light, you're embracing your power. And now when they can't get to you or like, you know, you know what I mean? Mess with you. Oh my gosh, it really triggers them. But it really doesn't matter at that point because you don't even care because you've learned to embrace who you are partly by not caring what other people think. And the other part of that, how do we not learn to not care what other people think? We learn to love ourselves. How do we learn to love ourselves? By speaking up for yourself, by standing up for yourself, by understanding and standing in your power, by doing what you wanna do regardless of what other people think of it. As you start to do the things that you want to do in your life that'll bring happiness and joy and fulfillment into your life, your light begins to shine brighter. You're living a more happy and fulfilling life. This is you loving yourself by doing and honoring what it is you want, regardless of what you've been brainwashed and programmed to think. So as you do this, you, it, becomes such an incredible power for so many reasons. You're learning to set boundaries, you're learning to love yourself, you're you're discovering and creating the identity of who you truly are, your authenticity, what you really, really like. You know, you used to always not uh, to like to wear those things, but you now realize you only used to not like to wear those things because your current friend group at the time thought they were stupid too, but you actually did like it. So you put on this mask in order to be liked by these people that didn't even really care about you in the first place just to be liked for approval because again, since you were shamed about being who you truly are as a little kid by those around you because they were triggered, you learn to sacrifice who you are and what you really want so that you could be liked by other people because that was the survival mechanism we needed as kids in order to get the love and attention that we needed that everyone else was getting that we didn't get because they were triggered by us instead of you know, uh, nurturing us of our and helping us learn to embrace our own uniqueness. So we've got to learn to not care what other people think. And so I'll give you some examples about this. And I'm just here to remind you guys this, like you know this already. You get a new hairstyle. You get a new hairstyle and you walk into work or whatever, you're just walking around. And the first person that sees you goes, oh my God, your hair, like, okay, that's different. You know what I mean? But clearly they don't like it and they're judging you. It's got nothing to do with you, it's them. They're triggered because you have the courage to change and, and, and body and, and create a new you know persona, a new uh, level of your life. And this hairstyle is just the physical manifestation of it. But they get triggered by it so they make some snarky comment because they wanted to change their hair forever but they're too scared because they're worried about what other people think. So this one person judges you about your hairstyle, right? But then you go into the grocery store and this uh, very handsome man or this very beautiful woman gives you a compliment and they go, they go I just wanna say, I can tell you just got your hair done. Man, you you're hands, you look so handsome. Your haircut is amazing. And you're like, dang, okay, so I was mixing it up and this other person told me making him feel all secure. Like I didn't like it, you know? Or it's like, hey, I just wanna tell you, you, I can tell you just got your hair done. You look beautiful. You know, it's like handsome man gives you a compliment. You're sitting there like, oh my God, oh my God. And these girls at work were sitting here hating on me like, and I was feeling kind of insecure about it. And then this like gorgeous man comes out. You know what I mean? So why do I bring that up? Because look, you go to another place, someone's gonna have another opinion. Other people are gonna have another opinion. And this isn't just with hairstyles, I just use that as a very baseline, simple example to understand. The point is, no matter what you do in your life, some people are gonna like it, and some people are not. So what are you gonna do? If you're a slave to what other people think and you're a recovering people pleaser, like me and a lot of other light workers and people who've had challenging trauma, uh, you know, abandonment issues, childhood traumas, abuse, sexual abuse, verbal, physical, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, all these things. Well, what? So you go around and you're gonna be like this with this person and you're gonna be like, you're gonna change your identity and be like this with this group of people and then you're gonna be like this with this group of people and then whenever you see people, you're just gonna be exhausted because you're always changing personalities because now you're wearing all these different hats. You're not being who you truly are. You're just being this way with different groups so that you can be liked and get the love and attention that you didn't get as a child. 
but that's exhausting because you're not being real. They can tell, you can tell. You may have gotten really good at it of putting on a different, you know, happy face, being liked by everyone, but it's a survival mechanism, but it's not who you truly are and you feel like you're betraying yourself deep down. That how do I know this? Why am I saying this? Because this was me, guys. This was me for so long. You know, um being abandoned, have so many childhood abandonment issues, right? Like uh being adopted at birth. So abandonment with my first mom, then my uh, foster mom died when I was six. Then my dad uh, was never really, he's a great guy. He was very, you know, man, the most emotionally unintelligent. I shouldn't say that. That's like a judgment on him. Um, not the nurturing type, right? Anyway, so uh, I was kind of neglected and abandoned, had all these crazy fights with my sister growing up. So needless to say, I was so desperate for love and attention. The skill set that I mastered and learned was one of charisma was learning to be an empath and read other people's energy, what they like, what their preferences are, what looks good on them. And I started to dress like them and talk like them. So to the point where it became a skill, and a, but it was really a survival mechanism, a trauma response, it didn't matter who I hung out with. And it, it, it is kind of a skill to this day. And it's funny, I'm kind of reflecting on it now that I, I do get to use it because I have developed it. But and what's that look like in a healthy way? But I've basically learned how to get along with anybody. I can literally charm and endear myself to anybody and especially being an empath, I can immediately tune myself to their energy, what they're interested in. I know how to, I used to learn, I used to do it out of manipulation because I wasn't awake at the time, but basically get people to open up to me and tell me everything about themselves and feel super comfortable and really like me because I learned how to get people to open up so they can just talk about themselves and then be genuinely or false, uh, inauthentically engaged with them so they can be like, oh my God, this guy's really cool. He really gets me. You know, he really, this guy gets me. Oh man, this guy's dope. Like, come and hang out with me and my boys, man. You know, or this girl, oh my God, he really like, he's so cool. He's got another day. But it was all, it was all fake. You see what I'm saying? It was because I was so insecure that I needed the approval of everybody and everything. I was so afraid to be unliked because that was hitting on my trauma and my root belief that I'm not lovable. I've been rejected by everyone. Nobody cares about me. So I developed a skill set to be liked and loved by everybody, but I was being fake as hell. And by doing that, I had zero self-worth because I wasn't doing anything for me. I was only doing it to be liked by other people. So this is why it's so important for you to learn to be independent of the good opinions of other people and learn to what it really means to be you, to embody who you are and your preferences. You want you are um, someone who just wants to dye your hair pink. You should do that because you want to do it. Screw what everybody else thinks. Someone's gonna have opinion about it anyways. You know, oh, uh, you like really wearing like extra baggy jeans right now. Like, okay, wear baggy jeans even though skinny jeans are in. Or I like to wear skinny jeans even though baggy jeans are in. Like, I'm just using silly examples, but I'm see what I'm saying? You have a dream in your life about going on and owning a small business as an artist, but everybody is shamed you and told you it's not possible. This is a bigger, more important example. You know that your purpose and journey is to speak on YouTube or in front of people like I am but you may be so crippled by the opinions of other people that you won't even get started. So you're having this yearning in your soul to do this thing, but you living your life, you enjoying your life is being inhibited and crippled by the opinions of other people because you're so worried about what other people think. So again, how do we get over this? You become aware. You become aware that other people's opinions have nothing to do with you and that how people treat you is simply a projection of their own insecurities and unhealed or healed being. You learn to be independent of good other people, uh, the good opinions of other people by loving yourself. What does that mean exactly? What does that look like? By doing what you want to do, regardless of what anyone cares about thinking about. I've seen this happen like uh, in the festival scene a lot, right? Like a lot of people will go in these like big festival groups, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great time too, and you'll go to these festivals. But then there's all this drama and discord within the group. Um, because it's like these people, part of the group wants to go see over here, part of the group wants to go with the end. They go, oh my God, we gotta stick together. Everyone's gotta be one group. We all gotta do the same thing. No, you don't. What's important is that you learn to go your own way and do what you wanna do. This is loving yourself. This is improving your self-worth. And the cool thing is that happens is when you start embodying this energy and you really dive into what's important to you, what you wanna do in this life, in this world with your life, and you start really embodying and enveloping um, or exhibiting and expressing the true authenticity of who you really are, 
the wrong people will fall away. The right people who are on the same vibe that truly do like what you like authentically are going to come into your life. That's what happens. But it's most important to learn to be independent of the good opinions of other people, i.e. not give up what other people think just so you can be happy. So if you feel unfulfilled, if you feel unhappy and there's all these things in your life you wanted to do but you never did them or you're still not doing them because you're worried about what other people think, this is your reminder and your opportunity to outgrow that now and to understand at the end of your life, when you're sitting on your deathbed, when you're lying on your deathbed, are you gonna go, man, I cared so much about what other people think, I never got to do what I wanted to do with my life? Or are you gonna say, man, I remember that turning point. I watched that dude's video on YouTube and I remember I started to change things and say, screw it, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Or, you know, it, you know, whatever, you're just reminded, you're making these changes in your life, whatever triggers that for you to start being unique and authentic. Dang, I remember that turning point and I was 27, I was 42, I was 63. Whatever your age, it doesn't matter. What matters is that today, you start moving forward with authenticity, doing what you wanna do. And you're, it is, it's difficult. Because like I said, in the end of your life, you're gonna go, man, I remember when I made that change and I started doing what I wanna do. And sure, I lost, quote unquote, lost a lot of people in my life, but I found myself and I lived the happiest, most fulfilling life for the rest of my life because I did that for me. Because here's the thing, guys, you are gonna lose friends. You are going to lose a lot of people in your life, or you might not. But if you've been wearing all the masks like I used to do and be all fake with everyone so you could be liked, you are gonna lose a lot of people. And you're gonna have to learn to vibe alone for a while. This is the season of isolation. This is when you get to know and love yourself, though. This is when the true you comes out and you get to blossom but you'll become so fulfilled. You'll become so happy, so authentic because you're doing now what's truly resonating with you. This is when all the magic and the blessings start to happen in your life. This is when you really attract the love of your life. This is when you really attract the friend groups that you really want that truly care and support about you because they get you because they're being the real you. And the cool thing is you'll also be able to filter out a bunch of BS and start to see through it because when you are vibing and embodying that self-worth, that self-love, and being independent and not giving it F what other people think about you, it's very clearly to see very quickly what's in alignment with you and what's not. So you're not gonna waste time and energy on people, places, and things that ain't for you because now that you're embodying and you're doing you, dude, when something is not right with the vibe and you're gonna be like, this is not me, you're gonna leave and you'll have no problem leaving because you're like, this just ain't me. But again, the cool thing is, as you do This Ain't Me, you'll find of, oh, this is me, and you'll find the other people and connections that are vibing with that same thing that is the real you. So it's practice, guys, because you've been programmed and brainwashed for X amount of many years to care about what other people think. You still have a lot of traumas and karma to heal and things to break through. It's hard work to get to that point. But what's on the other side? True freedom, true empowerment, abundance and fulfillment, love in all levels, on all relationships, a happy fulfilling, truthful, aligned life. And the cool thing is when you really get in the flow, all the magic starts to happen and you get to this point where you're unstoppable. That's where you're heading. So quit worrying about what other people think. What's the saying? Damned, uh, damned if I do, damned if I don't, right? Oh man, he told me to do it this way. She told me to do it. Oh my God, it's exhausting. Just do you. Quit worrying about what other people think. Because the other saying, the quotes I'll leave with you today, those that mind they don't matter. And those that matter, they don't mind at all. So do you. And the other is from Dr. Wayne Dyer. You've got to learn to be independent of the good opinions of other people. They're, everyone's going to have an opinion on how you should do things and what you should do. It's not their life. It's not for them to decide. It's for you to decide. So be you. You're awesome. You're amazing. Regardless of what everyone's told you in the past, You've been maybe shamed for your differences. Now you get to learn to love and embrace them. Now you understand why you were shamed. So now you get to be new, you, new, the new you. And you will blossom into a whole new beautiful life. So that's what I got for you today, guys. Love you very much, and I'll see you soon. Peace.